Father, we thank you for this day, Father. Once again, we come to your presence. We submitted this class into your hand, Lord Jesus. And we ask your wisdom knowledge. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes, good morning. And uh, today we will be looking at John chapter 10 and also uh, chapter 11. Uh, so last week, we closed John chapter 9. Uh, with that account of the blind man who had been blind from birth and he was miraculously healed by Jesus, who probably, in fact, does a work of creation in his eyes where he recreates missing elements uh, which should be there in the eye to make the eye function. Uh, and so uh, a great miracle takes place. And the response of the Pharisees to such a great miracle is that uh, the Lord has done this good deed on the Sabbath day. And that's all they can say about this wonderful thing which the Lord has done for the poor man. And in fact, they go on to probably excommunicate him from the synagogue. So that's the background with which we are starting off John chapter 10. Um, because over there in the you know uh, previous chapter, this is what Jesus says. And maybe we could actually start with that verse. John chapter 9 verse 39 to 41 if someone could read out john 39 uh, john chapter uh, 9 verses 39 to 41 and jesus said for judgment i have come into this world that those who do not see may may see and those who see may be made blind then some of the pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him are we blind also? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have to see, you would have no sin. But now you say, We see, therefore your sin remains. So these are the people whom Jesus is going to be addressing in John chapter 10. So it's good for us to know what kind of Pharisees that Jesus is speaking to. So here in the previous chapter, this is what Jesus says. There are some of you who were genuinely blind in the sense that you did not know the facts, you did not know the truth. So for such people, um, you know, he says, when I came to them and I told them the truth, they were willing to uh, believe. So the blind man had no idea who the Son of Man is. But once Jesus explains who the Son of Man is, he worships him and he becomes his follower. On the other hand, there are people who are not blind because they know the Old Testament scriptures. They know what the Old Testament says about the Messiah. They have also seen with their eyes all the miracles which Jesus has been doing. So they can clearly see that everything is pointing towards the Messiahship of Jesus. And yet they choose to ignore it. And so Jesus says, for judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see, you know, those who are blind and who do not know, the Lord is willing to help them to know the truth. But those who see and are still refusing to believe what they see, they will become blind, is what Jesus says. That's the judgment he passes upon them. Um, so um, it is to these people that Jesus is, is addressing the first few verses of John chapter 10. Uh, so, if we could have someone maybe read out for us uh, verses 1 to 6. John chapter 10, verses 1 to 6. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep but goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice yet they will by no means follow a stranger but will flee from him for they do not know the voice of its strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. So in these six verses, Jesus starts off with a figure of speech. He uses an illustration. Um, 
and uh, the image which he is using here is of a sheep fold something which the people of that time would have been very familiar with um you know they were a shepherd community uh, a lot of them owned cattle and sheep uh, which was one of the main sources of their income and uh, so when you're living in a town you know you can't exactly have a whole bunch of cattle and sheep surrounding your house right i mean it would create problems for all the for all of your neighbors so you need to have a place where you can keep your sheep and your cattle when you're living inside a town you know where you have um, what uh, space restrictions so in towns there would be something called a sheep fold a common sheep fold where all the people would take their sheep and keep it in different uh, you know um, cubicles or compartments uh, enclosures let us say yeah so you would have a large sheep fold with lots of enclosures inside and each enclosure would be allotted to one specific shepherd so all the sheep of that particular shepherd would be kept in that particular registered enclosure so when a shepherd wants to come and collect his sheep in the morning what does he do does he sneak in through the window no he's the owner of the sheep he very boldly walks up to the you know the gate of the sheep fold and the gatekeeper opens the door for him because after all he's the rightful owner of these sheep and uh, who is the one who sneaks in it's the one who actually does not have legitimate authority over the sheep so here this is what jesus is saying he's saying very truly you know the words which he uses when he wants to put something in highlights when he wants to bold a statement uh, so this is what jesus says over here very truly i tell you pharisees anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice uh, so he is saying to these pharisees you know you have appointed yourselves as leaders of the people and you decide you know uh, who should live how and what they should do on the sabbath day and what they should not do on the sabbath day but are you guys really the legitimate leaders of these of these people who appointed you as leaders you appointed yourselves as leaders but as uh yahweh approve of your you know appointment as leaders because you guys are robbers and thieves you know jesus is very directly saying that to the pharisaic leaders because they have uh, are making plans to excommunicate this poor man who has been healed of his blindness you know and they want to throw him out but do they actually have the legitimate authority to throw people out of the sheep fold whenever they want to because only the only the rightful shepherd has got the right to decide who who you know deserves to be inside his sheep fold and who does not who are these people who are saying that they are going to excommunicate this man they are not the rightful leaders they are just thieves and robbers who are more interested in promoting themselves than actually in shepherding the flock so here jesus is making a very serious allegation against them and he makes this observation and he says the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep the gatekeeper opens the gate for him so actually i have the authority over the sheep you people on the other hand have tried to snuck into the you know sneak into the leadership through some other means you have used uh, wrong methods and means to you know sneak into your positions of leadership is what he is saying and he also makes this statement about the sheep he says the sheep listen to the shepherd's voice he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out so um the shepherd over time get used to the voice of the shepherd it's something that they are you know acquainted to they're used to they keep listening to it throughout the entire day i uh, you know because they spend the entire day with the shepherd so they're familiar with his voice so usually when the you know when the shepherd comes into the enclosure in, into the sheep fold in the morning you know he just stands over there near the entrance and he calls out he'll have his own uh, signature call out you know um, it may be a particular a kind of whistle or it may just be a uh, you know a certain phrase which he he yells out and he does that every day so the minute his sheep you know the sheep which are there in his particular enclosure hear that they automatically recognize that their shepherd has come 
and they all begin to you know troop out of their enclosure and they come and gather around the shepherd so jesus is using that example here and he says you know what when the when the actual shepherd comes all of his sheep they automatically hear his voice they know his distinctive call and they respond to him and he leads them out so the lord is saying you pharisees have appointed yourselves as leaders but you know what i the true shepherd have arrived on the scene and everyone who is truly a sheep of mine they will hear my voice and they will respond like this blind man who was healed his parents hesitated to you know um, uh, to acknowledge jesus as their uh, messiah they you know kind of brush him off because uh, they are not true sheep but this man who has been healed he once he gets to know that jesus is the son of man and jesus must have explained to him what the son of man means once he understands those concepts he kneels down and he worships jesus so a true sheep automatically hears the shepherd's voice and recognizes that this is the truth that this is someone who cares about him who is talking to him the sheep the sheep is able to recognize that and so even though the people were technically under the leadership of the pharisees and the sadducees and the high priest and the chief priest uh, the the chief priest and the other priests even though the people were technically under the control of these people all those who really genuinely were true sheep who had this hunger in their hearts to know the truth and who were willing to make the sacrifices to stand up for that truth all such people recognized jesus voice and he led them out out of judaism he led them out of judaism into the into the way of christ which later on came to be known as christianity but originally back in those days if you look in the book of acts they were called the people of the way the way of christ which the shepherd had pointed out to them so they became followers of that way which the shepherd has shown to them they were led out of judaism into the way of christ so jesus says those who really are mine who have that desire in their heart to know the truth and are willing to take a stand for this truth even if it means sacrifices such people they will respond to me and so jesus is saying you know even though you may be calling yourselves leaders it's my voice that they will respond to and he brings out that in verse 4 he says when he has brought out all his own he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice so it's not the pharisees that they're going to follow and obey they will follow their shepherd if there's a chance for them to do a good deed on the sabbath they will do it because they are going to follow the voice of their master of their shepherd not the voice of these thieves and robbers who have appointed themselves as leaders um and jesus clarifies this even further he says in verses 5 and 6 they will never follow a stranger in fact they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice and then it says jesus used this figure of speech but the pharisees did not understand what he was telling them they didn't catch what jesus was saying over here jesus was basically saying you people you know are very proud of yourselves because you have such a large following there are so many people following you and looking up to you and they speak to you respectfully calling you rabbi and master and things like that and you feel very happy about it but you know what all these people are the ones who are not interested in the truth the ones who really are interested in the truth they will recognize your voice as a stranger's voice and they will run away from you they will come to me the true leader is what jesus you know is saying over here and in your notes there's this example given a very old example of something which took place during world war 1 and it says over there that um, you know uh, there were some there were these turkish soldiers who were posted Uh, on the outskirts of jerusalem at that time and they probably thought they they could make a little extra money by you know stealing the sheep and selling them and so you have these turkish soldiers coming over there and they they start leading the entire flock of sheep away 
and then the shepherd who's sleeping over there suddenly wakes up sees all his sheep disappearing in the distance and what to do he can't exactly you know fight with his armed soldiers so all he does is he calls out with his voice you know the distinctive call which he has for his sheep and once the sheep hear that they all automatically begin trooping back to the shepherd so the turkish soldiers are unable to retain control of the sheep because the sheep are not listening to them the sheep are listening to their shepherd and uh, so i think that's a very apt example because it brings out the truth of the sheep who know their shepherd's voice and today we are supposed to be that sheep so are we listening to the shepherd's voice today or are we listening to all the other voices which are promising popular uh, nice worldly things to us if we are true sheep we will run away from these other voices which are promising us all kinds of material benefits we will want to stay with the true shepherd because we know that his voice means security his voice is safety though the things which he says may be tougher we know the safety in that voice and we will want to follow that voice rather than the voices of all the others which are enticing us away with all kinds of attractive worldly things no so this is an important point to remember now verse 7 onwards jesus uses another example so the first example he used is of the sheep fold you know which is there in the town where all the shepherds keep their sheep and so you the, if you have the legitimate shepherd he doesn't go sneaking in through windows and through ventilators he openly comes up to the gate he walks in through the gate because you know he's the rightful owner of the sheep uh, he doesn't need to he doesn't need to sneak around now jesus uses uses a different example regarding the shepherd and uh, so we see that verse 7 onwards um maybe we could read out verses 7 to 10 please verse 7 then jesus said to them again most assuredly i say to you i am the door of the sheep all who ever came before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep did not hear them i am the door if anyone enters my by me he will be saved and will go in and out and and find pastures the thief does not come except to steal to kill and to destroy i have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly so now jesus is coming into a second example and again he uses this that term very truly you know as in he's saying pay attention to what i'm saying now and he says um not only does the legitimate shepherd enter through the gate the legitimate shepherd is also the gate itself in what sense um we talked about the sheep fold in the town but what about when you know the shepherd has taken the sheep far away and it's going to be many many kilometers to come back to the town um uh, so on such occasions in the night time you know when there's a danger of wolves and also if the weather is uh, you know very cold uh, the shepherd would try to find a cave or maybe build some kind of a brick structure where you know he can keep the sheep during the night time and so uh, whether it's a cave or whether it's a man made structure which the she- shepherd has made he would basically lie down at the entrance so that nothing can get inside without his noticing so if any wolf comes along who's the one who's going to be fighting the wolf not the sheep the sheep are safe inside it's the shepherd who's going to fight with the wolves so he literally is the gate of protection for all the sheep which are huddled up inside and so jesus says i am the gate for the sheep you know when the thief comes when the wolves come they only come with one purpose to steal to kill and destroy but i the shepherd who knows literally guarding the sheep you know standing there as a gate for them lying down at the entrance to protect them and i'm willing to risk my life for them he says i have come that they may have life and that they may have it to the full so there's this beautiful contrast which the lord is drawing between the true shepherd and the false leaders the true shepherd will go to any extent to for the well being and welfare of his sheep he has no harmful motives for them he doesn't have anything negative in his heart for them he only wants what's good for them 
on the other hand the thief has got a whole bunch of other motives a hidden agenda because you know the voice of the thief is sometimes so seductive so sweet he makes such nice promises so the thief says oh if you can just stop following this yahweh who is always full of rules and regulations and telling you not to do this and not to go there if you can just give up all that i can really give you a life i will show you what life is like that is what you know satan says to the believer but if you are a true sheep you would rather hear the safe voice of the shepherd than these lies which the thief is speaking and promising to you so it's something for us to note down because that is the main strategy which satan uses with many of us you know he says as long as you follow this jesus you know he'll steal all your joy he'll he'll, he'll make your life a very dull and boring one as long as you're with this jesus he'll kill kill your hopes kill your dreams because you can't compromise you can't take uh, you know um uh, sinful measures to achieve what you want in life so if you stick with him all your hopes and dreams will go down the drain on the other hand if you follow me you know i can i can make you even into a ruler is what satan says so basically satan says if you stick with this jesus jesus will destroy your future you'll not even have a future on the other hand if you come to satan and you know take liberties and make compromises oh then you can build up your future these are the promises which the devil makes to the believer but if you are a true sheep you will recognize that the shepherd is the one who literally is the gate he lies over there at the entrance of the enclosure so that no wolf can ever come inside and harm the sheep he cares is willing to even sacrifice himself on behalf of his sheep so we need to recognize the heart of the shepherd and we need to recognize the dark heart of satan and make the right decision when the time comes you know when the time of temptation comes um this is something which jesus says about himself as the true shepherd he says whoever enters through me will be saved because there's only one way to go to the father right anyone who comes through jesus they are the only ones who will get introduced to the father and they'll be able to live in the father's kingdom anyone who wants to come in any other way will not be able to even get in so the only way to the father is through jesus so in that sense yes he is the gate to eternal life but there's also another side to the you know there's another aspect of the gate a more practical one where you know jesus says they will come in and go out and find pasture he is a gate which provides liberty freedom you know this was a um, a hebrew um figure of speech going in and coming out it talks about uh freedom of not being restricted you will be able to go wherever you want to go you will be able to achieve whatever you want to achieve you will be able to come in and go out that's the phrase which was used which talked about freedom where there's no restrictions where you have for instance a slave cannot come in and go out a slave is stuck in the place of his slavery he is subject to the master and he has no freedom but jesus he says that those who come to him they will be able to go in and come out and find pasture so that's basically the phrase which is also used in your uh, you know deuteronomy 28 where you have all the promises listed out and if you would look at deuteronomy 28 verse 6 specifically that's the you know figure of speech which is used over there it says you will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out there will be great freedom in your movement you know as the israelites who where you will be able to go throughout the promised land and get what you need for your lives you will be blessed is what the lord promises in deuteronomy 28 verse 6 and now that same you know figure of speech is being used over here by jesus regarding people who will follow him he says that those who make him their gate they will be able to come in and go out and find as much pasture as they require for their life so he promises that he has come with only one intention to give us life and not just any kind of a life but life in you know in all, in all its fullness that's the kind of life which the true shepherd wanted to give us so jesus clarifies this further in the next few verses so maybe we could read out verses 11 to 
16 yeah i am the good shepherd the good shepherd give his life for the sheep but the hireling he who is not the shepherd on who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees the wolf catches the sheep and chatters them the hireling flees because he is hireling and does not care about the sheep i am the good shepherd and i know my sheep and i know by my own as the father knows me even so i know the father and i lay down my life for the sheep and other sheep i have which are not of this world them also i must bring and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd so here jesus begins to describe who exactly is a good shepherd so he says i am the good shepherd and because i am the good shepherd this is what i do for my sheep i am willing to lay down my life for them and in fact we see jesus doing that literally on the cross for us later uh, so he lays down his life for the sheep on the other hand what about the wolf if this danger you know the hired um, um, the the hireling the one who has just been hired and is receiving money to look after the sheep is not the true shepherd he's basically doing it for the money he's doing it for the benefits he's not looking after the, he's not sitting out there in the open in the fields you know the entire night with the sheep because he cares for the sheep he's basically doing it for the money which is there in it so such a uh, hireling a hired person when a wolf comes along he just runs he doesn't care about the sheep because he's not leading the sheep for the sheep's benefit he's leading the sheep for his own benefit so that's basically the issue with satan satan is uh, it makes big promises to us and maybe he will even help us in our schemes and strategies to an extent if it is going to serve his interests because satan is engaged in a war with the living god i mean it's a very foolish thing to do to to get into a war with the almighty one when you're just a created being a rather silly thing to do but that's basically what satan has you know uh, made his life uh, life's purpose so satan has gotten into a uh, lifelong war with the almighty one and we humans are just pawns that he tries to use in his strategies and his schemes he couldn't care less about us he couldn't care less what happens to us or, or our future he just tries to use us as and when convenient you know we see all these politicians coming to power i mean they, they are so evil so corrupt and yet they you know uh, hold important positions it is only because satan is using them for his own schemes and strategies he couldn't care less what happens to the politician tomorrow you know when the time comes and the lord wants to expose that politician he just leaves the uh, politician at the lord's mercy and he goes his own way and finds some somebody else some other pawn to play with so it's something very vital that we need to understand when temptations come to us do we listen to that sweet voice of the temptation and the uh, the evil one tempting us or do we voice to the gruff voice of the shepherd the voice the shepherd's voice does sound gruff sometimes but that is the voice of safety it's the voice which cares about us very deeply to the extent of being willing to die for us i think it's better for us to go with that gruff voice of the shepherd which sometimes asks for unpleasant things rather than go with the sweet syrupy voice of the evil one who only is syrupy as long as it it suits his personal interests who has no interest in the in the future of the sheep so jesus says i am the good shepherd i know my sheep and my sheep know me you know they know that i am the one who will lay down my life for them so they'd rather follow me rather than following the all shepherds and so he says i have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen i must bring them also they too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd that's the dream that jesus had where he can bring in his true sheep even from all the other sheep folds you know people who belong to other religions people who belong to other races 
people who belong maybe to other communities at the other end of the earth he cares about all of them he knows that there are true sheep waiting for him in all of those other sheep folds and he wants to bring them all in into the kingdom there's a more immediate meaning to this uh, you know because this is a promise which jesus had um, which yahweh had made in the old testament to the people of israel um that would be in your ezekiel chapter 37 verse 24 if someone could actually go to ezekiel and read out that um because here jesus is fulfilling that promise you know so we need to read that uh, ezekiel 37 verse 24 uh, ezekiel 37 24 david my servant shall be the king over them and they shall all have one shepherd they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them here you know um, ezekiel is prophesying that one day even though the people are all scattered you know the jews as a community are scattered in you know, over over many different places you know some of them are living in uh, babylon and persia some of them are living in egypt so uh, ezekiel is prophesying and saying a day will come when the shepherd you know, the shepherd whom god has appointed the davidic shepherd when he comes he will bring them all back together under his fold and they will all be united as one flock under one shepherd so um uh, ezekiel actually prophesies that uh, you know in fact he explains that in verse 19 where he talks about how there will be two sticks one representing juda and there would be an other stick representing ephraim or you know the northern tribes and he say, he talks about how both both these sticks will be joined together to form one single stick you see that in verse 19 where he says i will make them into a single stick of wood and they will become one in my hand jesus when he speaks these words he is fulfilling that prophecy he is saying i will make sure that my sheep my jewish sheep which are there in all the other sheep pens i will bring them back together and they will all be under my protective covering so this is what jesus is saying about the jewish people but of course you know we uh, who, who are able to uh, look at this passage from the cross uh, from you know from the perspective of the cross we realize that jesus was talking about something much more than just uniting the jewish people he was also referring to the gentiles no uh, his sheep which are right now in somewhere in some gentile sheep fold they too will hear his voice when the time comes and they too will come to him to be under his covering so jesus dream was always for one flock and one shepherd i do not know whether god is against different denominations church denominations as long as we are humans and we have different perspectives and different opinions and different interests i think there will always be diversity you know because some denominations may bring out one aspect of the way we want to serve which may be we may not be able to do in another denomination so this is entirely my personal belief i personally believe that i think it is all right for the lord uh, all right with the lord if we have different denominations uh, because we all express ourselves differently we look at life differently we all have maybe have a different need and certain denominations may be able to cater and provide for us what another denomination may not be able to so in the same way the lord has created us very diverse and different from one another maybe it is all right for him if we choose to express ourselves in worshiping him in different ways so i think that it is okay but our god detests the competition that is there between denominations that i'm sure really uh, you know hurts his heart because he wants he 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 has introduced diversity you know he has made us very very different people even in your own household if you look at your two children they be so different from one another so he has introduced diversity but he wants unity in that diversity that i think is something that he cherishes and treasures and when we compete with one another i think that really you know dishonors the lord so it is i think quite all right for us to have different denominations and express ourselves differently in worshiping him 
but to point fingers at each other and say oh uh, my denomination is better than yours i think that is very disgusting you know so uh, that i'm sure definitely does not please the lord so he would rather prefer us to be united that we would you know uh, extend grace and love towards one another from all denominations whichever denomination we may belong to rather than constantly judging each other and criticizing and condemning one another you know so when a person comes to our church let us not say oh you are in that denomination is it i'm so glad you came to our denomination no um especially because i mean growing up uh, i was uh, the child of a central government employee central government employees get transferred all over the country we don't get to choose where we go so wherever we went we tried to find a church where the lord is being honored by the weather you know the word is being taught faithfully so i have been part of all denominations and i have seen wonderful people of god in every denomination it's true not all of them were very familiar with the work of the holy spirit yes i admit that but they were lo they loved the lord and they lived so as such beautiful witnesses for him in different denominations so let us have that love in our heart for people of all denominations you know no matter which denomination they may belong to because they may be sh true sheep which have been positioned over there to draw people to him even in those places they are the only lights in those places and they are working for him you know so if everyone comes to our denomination which we think is right then who's going to be the light in those denominations to lead the people to the true shepherd you know so that's just me giving my argument now let's look at another aspect which is brought out over here when jesus is speaking these words uh, he says um, you know they too will listen to my voice and they will shall be one flock and one shepherd so the true shepherd is all about gathering people together bringing in unity uh, bringing in that uh, that beautiful oneness of the spirit on the other hand if you look at the schemes of the uh, wolf you know the thief and the robber they are always wanting to scatter to divide so while the shepherd unites the thief and robber always scatters so we should not become instruments of the evil one in bringing you know um, um disunity and competition between denominations and also within our own church we should be careful that we are not allowing unforgiveness or you know jealousy or hatred to creep in which will bring about disunity so we should guard against these things because the thief and the robber always wants to scatter on the other hand the true shepherd wants to unite us together and bring us into oneness um all right let's maybe move into verses 22 onwards um so uh, john chapter 10 if we could have someone read out for us uh, from verse 22 up to verse 30 please uh, john 10 22 to 30 verse 22 now it was a feast of dedication in jerusalem and it was winter and jesus walked in the temple in solomon's porch the jews surrounded him and said to him how long do you keep us in doubt if you are the christ tell us plainly jesus answered them i told you and you do not believe the works that i do in my father's name they bear witness of me but you do not believe because you are not of my sheep as i said to you my sheep hear my voice and i know them and they follow me and i give them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any one snatch them out of my hand my father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand and i and my father are one so here um jesus is speaking these words at the time of the festival of dedication at jerusalem what exactly was this festival this is not one of the festivals which is mentioned in your book of leviticus um this festival happened due to the circumstances which the people went through um you know the, in second century bc the syrian king antiochus epiphanes uh, he comes and he takes over 
uh, Jerusalem temporarily for uh, for I think um, three or four years. Yeah, and so during that time, uh, he you know he desecrates the temple. He in fact installs an altar to his own god Zeus, and he sacrifices pigs specifically because you know in the Old Testament the uh, eating of the pig was forbidden. So he does all these things just to antagonize and just to um, you know um, dishonor the Jewish people and to dishonor their God. Uh, so at that time, the Maccabeans, uh, uh, you know, who are a priestly class, they rise up uh, to to fight against uh, these Syrians. Uh, so there's a lot of war which goes on at that time. Finally, for some time, they're able to win back, uh, you know, Jerusalem. And uh, so at that time, they clean up the temple once again and they rededicate the temple, you know, to honor Yahweh. So they, they destroy all these uh, pagan altars which have been constructed in the, within the premises and they purify that entire place. And uh, they, you know, it's a seven day festival which they start to uh, celebrate, where the idea is that now this temple has been rededicated to honor Yahweh and Yahweh alone. So now Jesus is standing over there in the premises of this temple and Jesus is saying, um, the people come to him and they say, the Jews come to him and they say, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. You know, those of us who have been patiently studying the book of John from chapter 1 onwards, we would feel like they're saying to them, what else do you think Jesus has been talking about in the, over the last few chapters? Plainly enough, again and again, he's been repeating it and it's, it's already been drilled into our heads. But these people are again asking, tell us plainly if you are the Messiah. And Jesus says, there's nothing wrong with the way I'm explaining things. It's very plain. The reason you're unable to hear me is because only my sheep can hear my voice. And Jesus says in verse 26, you do not believe because you are not my sheep. But those who are my sheep, don't you worry about them. They are safe in my hands. Nobody will be able to snatch them out of my hands. So, you know, um, the Lord is giving this assurance to the people, those who are his true followers, that even as they come over here to this temple, which has been rededicated to Yahweh, they will be safe under Yahweh's hand. Because if they are under the true shepherd, the true shepherd will see to it that they stay protected that they will stay safe. It's only the ones who go running after the false leaders. They are the ones who are at risk. But those who have placed themselves under the care of the true shepherd, they, you know, the Lord himself, he will take care of them. Um, and um, there's this, uh, this an aspect which is brought out over here when Jesus says, um, my father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. Um, maybe in this context, if we can look at another verse from Matthew, in, actually, if someone could go to Matthew chapter 13, if you can look at verses 11 to 15, there's something very serious which Jesus is talking about over there. Matthew 13, verses 11 to 15. He answered and said to him, said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has to him, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has, will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear not they do they understand and in them the prophecy of israel isaiah is fulfilled which says hearing you will hear and shall not understand and seeing you will see and not perceive for the heart of this people has grown dull their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed least they should see with uh, their eyes and hear with their ears, least they should not understand with their, their heart and turn so that I should heal them. So the shepherd has come speaking, teaching, preaching to heal. You know, he wants everyone to be healed. He wants everyone to be restored. That's the intention with which he has come. 
but there are two categories of people listening to him there are those who are hearing but they don't want to really um, you know uh, believe and accept what is being said and then there are others who are genuinely responding to the shepherd's voice and they are making a commitment so this is the danger which the people who do not make a commitment this is the danger which they face this is something very very true which jesus speaks in matthew 13 verse 12 he says whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them because that's what jesus said in the at the end of chapter 9 you know he said those who are seeing i will make them blind because they are they have seen they have understood and yet they are not willing to make a commitment and jesus threatens and says such people i will literally make them blind and this is what is brought out here in matthew 13 as well where jesus says those who you know that like that man, that that man who got healed of his blindness he didn't know much jesus told him about who the son of man is he humbly accepted that and he worshiped him that little guy you know that that man who knows so little is going to be given much more until he has an abundance but these pharisees who already know so much in their heads whatever they have whatever truth they have briefly managed to grasp even that will be taken away from them and they will go completely blind because they have rejected the truth so jesus is saying over here those of you who have, who have heard my voice and believed in me and trusted in me don't worry you're safe nothing and no one can snatch you away from my hand because you are safe you have chosen to trust in me and depend on me but the others who are not hearing me they are at risk the evil one can do anything to them but you who have trusted in me you're safe in my hands continue to listen to my voice you know that's basically what jesus is trying to convey over here so we'll come back from the break and uh, look further into these uh, verses thank you